Wojo is like Power Rangers. We come and we fight. We go back to the drawing table to figure out what else we need to fight for and then we put on our suits and we fight for something else. I heard about Wojo because as I came into a new way of life, Tiffany Johnson told me I think you would like to join. She explained Wojo and I told her of course I'm all for it. I wanted to get involved because I experienced a lot of the challenges in a nutshell. Kind of have touched the surface of a lot of different areas that prevented me from like getting my kids back from the system and then also getting work getting a place to live just finding myself situated in society again i have two lost my children to the system and it took me six years to get them back 80 percent of my family have been locked up institutionalized and i know that they still want us the neighborhood i grew up in it was only right to start game eight when you grew up in a lifestyle it's pretty much Play it out for you. It's, it's a it's a rare carpet that's just pretty much going to tell you what you're going to do in life. They actually called me in my neighborhood, Dennis the Menace, because I got in trouble all the time. We're all not bad people. Some of us made mistakes, and restorative justice would be better than penitentiary because all the things that they want us to do to rebuild yourself is not half of them are not there. They have to come from within, or you know somebody that's outside doing it and they're helping you. Rehabilitation is not in the prison system. It's not what the prison system is designed for. It's designed for you to come back. <laughs> We're working on Obviously, you know, the Department of Children and Family Services were looking at how they uh, historically have taken women's children, especially incarcerated women's children, and fast-tracked adoptions and thrown them into the system and not even with so much as a consideration for human rights, much less parental rights. And so it's my ultimate goal to put together a case and present it before the World Court um, and charge the United States Department of Children and Family Services with Crimes Against Humanity. Everything about my mom is that she's really funny, like she'll just make jokes. She likes to play with me, she'll come up and she'll just say, she'll say something and make me laugh or she'll just come up and tickle me. It's almost like they're throwaway children. When you're not allowing them any contact or custody, you're hurting the children. Taking the child outside of their environment, which is their family, is very detrimental to them and to put them back into their family core even without their mother there or their father there is for their heart and their mind that they're in a place where they know that the love is there. I'm the oldest of five. My mom was virtually a single mom and we were in and out the system ourselves. I would definitely change how they treat mothers. I would definitely change the amount of support that women get, you know, who are incarcerated and have children. Because that shapes a lot of things that go on, you know, in our society. A lot of kids have moms or parents who are incarcerated and once a parent leaves, that child is basically less susceptible to anything that happens. So the system is not designed or set up for a mother to win, you know, it's always to lose and you win only because you fight the injustice or you meet someone that provides you with the opportunity to fight. What I would say to other children or people doing, going through this, I would say, uh, it's good to talk about it. It really is. Um, it's good to write about it and it's good to, it's good to really feel it, but you don't want to, you don't want to over, let it overcome you. You don't want it to take over your body like it used to for me. So you just have to push through it and you have to say, I have a lot of good things going for me right now. There's m multiple systems, but under the umbrella of one system, right? And so like the criminal injustice system, I would completely dismantle it. I think we need to look to other countries like Norway and Sweden and really 
uh, look at their models of rehabilitation versus punishment. This country is so backwards in terms of that. And I think that the Department of Children Services falls under that umbrella. And especially when you look at the racial context and the history of how these institutions and policies and, and people and programs came to be. I would work closely with the groups of people who have been on the forefront of these issues for decades to erect a new and just system that actually does rehabilitate, that actually does care about helping families, that actually has people's best interests at heart instead of monetizing people and their children and their lives. I grew up with a difficult childhood. My father was alcoholic, so he physically abused me a lot and emotionally. And I grew up with my stepmom, who was also a drug user. I think the biggest contributing factors to me for incarceration was domestic violence. Things that happened in my home when I was raised. I had my first child at 14, so literally a spiral from there. My first experiment with drugs was about, I'd say about 11 or 12 years old, and it just went from there. So it turned out to be the cycle that I ended up going through for the next 20, 30 years of my life. The biggest contributing factors to my incarceration was that being a single parent, taking care of four kids, were my only options from the choices I had to choose from. Changing a lot of the systematic downturns that affect you know, African American women or women of color in regards to how they're, they're treated and, re and how their children are treated once they're separated or they're ripped apart from their families and placed in foster care and with people that they don't even know. The disconnect that was forced upon them. Because I know I messed up, but to have them be constantly reminded that I'm nothing and to only get them back to know that they have stripped any connection or anything that was good about me away. The system puts you in this certain type of category that you can never change. Um, they don't believe in second chances. When I think about my future, that's what I think, financial security, my children's future being secure. It's really walking and standing and speaking my truth. I see myself doing exactly the same work what I'm doing right now, implementing policy, implementing change, raising awareness and being the voice for others. I see it changing laws and making social workers and the DCFS system more accountable for what they're doing. I feel like what I'm doing now is big, you know, and it can only get bigger as long as I grow people around me. I just see myself with the, just a bunch of, you know, women fighters and just becoming big and known, like, don't mess with them because they going to tear it down. <laughs> as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to be in this movement, in this fight, until something changes. Don't let anybody hold you back. That's what I would have to say. Shout out to Susan Bell. New way of life is in the house.